Okay, let's look at the cycling of carbon in the biosphere, meaning all the living organisms. So how does carbon cycle? And this is showing us the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. There are lectures about both processes um, broken down on the channel. You can find them in the non-majors biology lecture playlist. So let's look at cellular respiration first. Sometimes I'll abbreviate it CR. Okay, so what goes into cellular respiration? We have food that you eat um, or plants can make, which is also known as organic molecules. And organic, remember, this is important, means it's carbon-based. So this means it's mostly made of carbon, the food is, carbon atoms. So that means when we have food used in cellular respiration, something with carbon in it needs to be the product. So I'm going to put this on the outsides. It's going to cycle. So food is broken down into smaller carbons in the form of carbon dioxide, or CO2. There's our carbons. So when you breathe out carbon dioxide, that comes from the food you ate or from your body molecules like fat stores or protein stores, carbohydrate stores, things like that. What process is most important for breaking down this food and releasing carbon dioxide? That would be the citric acid cycle. And as you're going to see, all the carbons are the cycles. So you can remember C for carbon, C for cycle, carbon dioxide. That's what goes to what? So yes, food is a solid coming in and a gas going out. The other thing that goes into cellular respiration is oxygen, or O2. And oxygen is going to be converted into water. H2O. And in our book, they refer to the um, process that converts the oxygen into water as the electron transport chain. Or ETC. So that's the electron transport chain, ATP synthase, and so forth. The other important molecule, the point of cellular respiration, is an energy compound called ATP. I'm drawing this wiggly line because that means uh, a high energy. That's where we're, what I'm representing that. So this is a high energy molecule and it's used to do cellular work. So where did the energy start? It ends up in ATP, it starts in food. So we've got the energy stored in the food and that is converted to energy stored in ATP. Well then we have to take the water and carbon dioxide and bring it back into being oxygen and food. And that's through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, I'll abbreviate PS sometimes. So we have the back cycling cycle because it goes back and forth and back and forth. That's what a cycle is. So let's do the food and carbon dioxide. So we have carbon dioxide and that's going to get converted back into food molecules. And the process that hap that uh, where this occurs is cycle. It's called the Calvin cycle. Remember the carbon the carbons are all with the C's with the cycle. And this cycle builds. So we broke down. This time we're building food from carbon dioxide into larger carbon compounds. And then water is converted back into oxygen 
in what are called the light reactions. In addition to water and carbon dioxide coming in to photosynthesis, we need an energy source, and that is going to be our light energy. Let's remind ourselves who do these processes and where they occur. So photosynthesis in eukaryotes occurs in the chloroplast. There's another lecture with the drawing of that. And who does it? Plants. Um, things we call seaweed, which are large algae. So we can also say there's also small algae, unicellular algae, but seaweeds, algae, plants, and then also cyanobacteria. So those are not eukaryotes. There's a bacteria that do photosynthesis. Who does cellular respiration? Well, in eukaryotes, it's in the mitochondrion. And we have animals that do this. Plants, they do cellular respiration too. They gotta make ATP. Fungi, lots of types of bacteria. We have uh, the seaweed and algae we talked about before. It does, photo, uh, it does cellular respiration too. So if we look at this overall, we can trace the energy from the light energy into stored in food, broken down and then stored in ATP, and then used for cellular work. Why do we have these oxygen and water? Well, we need electrons to be able to power the cycle, and that's the cycling of electrons. The oxygen and water cycle the electrons back and forth and back and forth, and they help power the uh, overall energy transfer that you're seeing here. So that's a breakdown of cellular respiration and photosynthesis showing the cycling of carbon in the biosphere.